like super nitty last night? It's part two of this session of poker time. There's already been significant bloodletting. Lots of biggish pots. Lots of craziness. Dan just won a uh, pot when he got in with jacks against kings. It was pre-flop. a smallish pot for an all-in pre-flop because his opponent Peter was down to two hundred and fifty-five dollars yeah. or something. Peter, of course, that's represented by the empty seat. Yep, empty Peter. That's what they nice. call him. Yeah, we've got some limping here. We've seen a lot of limping actually in the in the first episode as well. A surprising amount, even with really big hands. Marty's going to raise to an amount that's never getting through the limps Especially with seven eight. That is correct. And Joseph should absolutely re-raise, knowing it's Marty. Yep, and it looks like he is going to. And we're going to see how stubborn Ken and the Vig are feeling these days with their pretty-ish hands. Oh, they're not going to be stubborn for 170. Oh, wow. No, I didn't realize it was that much. <laughs> I, th I, thought, I thought it was about an 80. It looked like 80 or 90, but I guess, guess I don't think not. even Marty can be stubborn for 170, but you know what? I've been proven yeah, wrong before. Yeah, let's, let's not be sure, but I would expect everyone to find folds here. Vig lets it go. Marty is at least counting out chips he does not like to fold this marty if you haven't He's seen him play before in position but i think this is this look and all that he usually calls quickly when he's calling if you shove i won't fold that much i can promise you so it's really up to you because the action is on you or he's gonna call well he has live cards that's I good i wouldn't try this at home wouldn't wouldn't, i wouldn't try this on the road i wouldn't try this in space <laughs> I wouldn't try this in a place. Any place. And great flop for Joseph. <laughs> Feels so comfortable when you're against a complete wild card. You could have any two cards. You just flop a hand that you'll just never fold. He just moves Marty in, and Marty has no hand and no draw. So I think that's going to be the end of this one. Marty hasn't folded yet, but even Marty can't find a call here. I got to believe. There we go. Sadness for Marty. Optimistic to take that flop with the eight seven off there for yep. one seventy. Yeah. <laughs> Marty gives Joseph a stare as if like, did you bluff me? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Joseph was telling the truth that time when he said, "I, uh, he's willing to go with it pre-flop." I got to believe against Marty. Oh, specifically. for sure. For Ice Queen sure. is killing Marty's range. Marty seems to be of the philosophy that if he v pips at any point, he's not allowed to fold pre-flop or post-flop Yeah, he protects his children. Yeah. By children, I mean chips. And by chips, I mean money that he puts in bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's letting go of the ace. How does he do it? How does he know? Peter's got tens behind him. You see Peter's back, by the way. So sick. Empty Peter. By the way, he's called Empty Peter not because of the empty chair, but of course because he loves multi-tabling. Empty Peter. Oh, I get it. Thanks. Vig with a very nice hand. Could have three-bet it. Yeah, but Peter hasn't been particularly active. Whoa. Well, that's a good flop for Peter, and I think he's going to get a little action here. Of course, he could lose the hand, but it's unlikely. He's only got uh, 960 back. They may end up getting it all in here at I mean, some point. Depends on the run out, of yeah, course. Yeah, of course, but like a heart on the turn. Ace on the it. turn. Ace on the turn, almost certainly. Although 10's full is not so great on that board. It's not terrible, though. Like, you don't think you're up against Ace-King very often, and you don't think you're up against Ace-10 very often. Whatever, so. Oliver Hudson. All right, so. <laughs> nice. See, it's 250 big, on the turn. I like that sizing. Yeah, gives yeah. him a chance to get it in now on the Quickly river. Quickly called. And, and that's a terrible river card. Luckily for Peter, it does not actually improve the VIG to beat him. Yeah. But now he doesn't get to get the full double. And I don't See know if the he VIG's face. I don't know if he would have anyway. Like, if a, a deuce came, the VIG might fold to an all-in. I don't know if he would or not, but it'd be reasonable to call. That's all I know. I don't know. From what I've seen from Peter so far, which is not a ton, but it doesn't seem like he's much of a wild card. I mean, mm. you just have to assume he's three-barreling with whatever he has because all of the value beats ace-queen for sure. You don't think he's ever got ace-jack there? No. Are you crazy? <laughs> I don't think all the value beats ace-queen. He could be up against ace-queen. He could mm. be chopping. I think he checks ace-queen on the river if it's a deuce. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Got him. He's got less than a pot. I don't know if that's true. Anyway, we we'll never know. Marty's going to limp the king three off because he's got a king and a three, and they're off. Eh, he's got cards. That's the reason. Ken with the real hand. Should should raise to isolate Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I like the sizing here. It's a little big. Just make sure that Batiste doesn't get a little squirrely. Yep. And also give Marty a chance to shove. Marty will sometimes just shove here. Oh, yeah. And of course, you instant. Usually call. for 62 and a half blinds, you're not thrilled about with two sevens, <laughs> but against Marty, it is an instant. With call. Marty, you can, you can order up the streamers now in the confetti because <laughs> the party is going to happen. You're going to be very happy his with the result is, a tremendous amount of time. His nickname is Marty Party. Yeah. That's right. And it's not because, you know. He likes to party. <laughs> and it's also not because he formed his own political party in middle school, right. which he it's, did do. But that's not why we call no, him that. Yeah. Not. And ironically they enough, it was the, called. Go ahead. The drafts. That's what, that's what he called. But it. yeah, you know, he called them the drafts, but everyone else called it the Marty party. Yeah, of course. So. And Marty finally with a real hand. Hey, he's and he's raising. A little bit too much. So much. Why 80? Well, if someone has any kind of a real hand, he's going to be able to get it all in with them. But. Well, he tried limping before with Ace King. And how about work out. how about he did thirty five once when there were all those limpers. Yeah, <laughs> thirty five now would have been a great eighty would have been better sizing. with all the limpers. Yes, 35, like switch those up and you got yourself a nice little strategy there. <laughs> Tactic anyway. Um, oh come on! You don't like me calling you out for your misuse of the word strategy? I don't like you doing anything. <laughs> There's so much hatred on this show, and I just mean between you and me, not, of course, yeah. between the players. The players all like each other. That's we like the players. We just don't like each other. Yeah, no, the hatred is the lifeblood of the show. The only time I talk to you is when we're doing this show. Oh, yeah. I mean, I never it talk to you. It is complete silence when I walk into Poker Guys <laughs> HQ until the record button. It's like, like just like a few like gr you know, disgruntled stares at each other. Yeah, like, like trying you, to communicate it's silently you. like, yeah, we're going to do poker time now. Okay, great. I guess. Let's pretend we like each other. Here's a nice flop for Peter because he's open-ended and top pair for the vague Marty, and top pair for Batiste. Marty's got a combo draw. Wow, everyone has something here. Something real. Top pair or big draws. Marty's got the most equity. He could... Vi uh, I guess I was going to say he could very easily shove, but he's the better. So no. Oh, well, well the there we go. going to let him shove. And I think Marty should absolutely shove. 100%. And he does. I he's like that shove. He's getting called. He does not have enough fold equity is, here uh, with 400. No, more, there's obviously. no way Vig is ever going to fold. Um, Vig's probably thinks he's losing, but Marty has the overcard as well as his combo draws. You see, he's 52%. It's a great spot for Marty. Marty, although he is a little wacky, has also run a little bit bad in flips so far in poker time. Yes. Let's see if he can change that here. Disembodied Marty there. Well, I mean, you can see his body, just not his head. This is headed Marty. There you go. That's not a good card, but he's got one more. That's not a good Can't card. Can't make it happen. The table mourns. <laughs> and I think Marty might be done. Oh, yeah? He's got his jacket there. He didn't take his jacket He's last carrying time. his microphone, it looks like, so I don't know. Oh, wait. No, he's putting it on the table in the background. Hard to know. Maybe he's done. Yeah, he's, he's taking off the microphone. Well, we do have um, an alternate prepared for such a scenario. So. And it's the ghost of Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's really hurtful to uh, some people who knew and loved Steve Jobs. Who loved Steve Jobs? Wow. His family, maybe? Yeah, did you read the book? I, re I saw the movie. Yeah. I read some of the book, actually. His parents seemed to love him. Eh. <laughs> Not his biological parents. No, his, his adopted parents. <laughs> Joseph with Ace King. His biological parents hated him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Marty's clearly done. Getting his phone from the cone of silence zone where the phones are kept. Also known as the area right behind the players. I, I said it better. Stuart looks wistfully at his phone. He's like, I wish hey, I could Marty. be doing my millennial things on my telephone. Alrighty. Nice to see you. Good, like reading Marty. zines. Care, <laughs> Checking out the latest kicks. Yeah. And by kicks, I don't Converse. mean I don't mean shoes. No, I mean actual kicks. Oh, like people Bruce kicking. Lee kicks. Yeah, yeah. What are the latest cool kicks that are out there? Who's the good kicker these days? Tony Zhao was a big deal for a little while, but there, that's, that's that's old school that's, now. That ship has sailed, my man. Who's good at kicking? Hey, no one has anything except Joseph's, Joseph's got the nut got flush nice, draw and nice overs. Flop. Look at that 98% against three queen jacks. That is amazing. A diamond might get him a little money out of Ken. Yeah, it will. Ken, Ken is pretty sticky. Yeah. He'll certainly get one bet and possibly two. Joseph decides to check. I wonder if he's going to check raise if he I bet he is, two. but no one's going to bet. And great card for Joseph. I like uh, I like Joseph's hand here. Well, actually, everyone picks up more. One percent equity. <laughs> well, I mean, a ten now makes a straight. Yeah, I know. There's three they tens. They all pick up one percent. Yeah. Check. Now Joseph's in major trouble. <laughs> the ten of not diamonds would be devastating, but it's a big miss. And I don't think Joseph's getting any action. I expect him to bet this time. See if he can find a check and hope to get bluffed. Nope. nope. 
he's gonna check but he's like come on batiste giving batiste as much rope as possible here but no it does not happen and no bets go in post flop despite joseph flopping and turning so well joseph bets the flop he might get two streets out of ken he might he certainly gets one street no i think ken on the turn picks up a straight draw as well as the it's diamond drop he calls. might call again but we are pretty sure Joseph was check raising the flop, and maybe even the turn. Probably not, but maybe. It was extremely yeah, nice. nice. And way too nice, actually. Okay, there you go. That's probably, yeah, that's probably right. better. Yeah, you know, I, I enjoy drawing the my three hour that's on the for free. So <laughs> that's that what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I, no, I, I, I'm supporting you. In retrospect, you. it was actually I turned out. Fish hooks for Stuart. Sick. Did you come up with that? Yeah. I'm going to come up with some other names now. For, for famous hands, favorite hands and famous hands and good hands and stuff. Nice ass for Ken. <laughs> you get it? Nice ass. A ten. Nope. It's a ten. Yeah. It's an ace. So it's a it's the best ace. So yeah. it's a nice ass. Yeah, like it's a ten out of ten ace. Ace ten is nice ass now. I don't get it. Joseph with queen queen deuce of diamonds. That doesn't have a nickname. If it's too loud, you're too old. That's what I, mean, I, I think there's only one. If it's too yeah. loud? It's a Back to the Future reference, and I'm just uh, pointing out how you don't get my reference. Cause yeah, they're right. Back to the Future reference, not too old at all. No, That movie came out in 1985. It's hipster chic. <laughs> it's actually a pretty darn good movie. Checks through. All the incest in that movie is amazing. All right. There's not so, that much incest. But there's enough. Stuart still has the best <laughs> of it. Joseph looks like he's going to bet his deuce now as a protection. Stuart not folding for one bet. We know this. Stuart sure, actually wearing the Marty McFly uh, yeah, vest there. Changed the color, and uh, he's a dead ringer for him. I wouldn't say that. A dead ringer. I would guess he has different relationships with his parents that Marty McFly had with his. Let's hope. <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> Joseph, miracles, the card. I don't know if Stuart's going to call, though. I don't know either, but man. Joseph gives the look of, like, I'm a little disappointed. But I'm pretty sure he's going to be happily betting here. I feel like you're projecting. I don't think he was giving a look. I think he was. There's the bet. Pretty cheap. Well, 100 into 270. I don't think Stuart's going to turn those odds down. Clubs missed. 4 5 missed. Ace 4, Ace 5 missed. Joseph, Joseph is the type of guy who might turn a 3 or a deuce into a bluff sometimes. Might Joseph be betting a 9 when it checks all the way through and he's got, if he's got a good 9 here? No. Why? I I because Jack 10? So. I think it's too. I think There's it's just too good to bet. <laughs> maybe you could try and get if he's got a if he's got Ace Nine. Maybe that's the only one. So it does call. Well, that's gonna be nice for Joseph. I'm not surprised to call there. It makes sense. Queen Dewey never Louie. Stewart makes the face of similar to the face when Marty McFly's mother tried to have sex with him <laughs> in the car. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we all were taken back to that that moment. What is there a movie that is not intentionally about incest with more incest than Back to the Future? Huh. Yeah, I hope Pat is not well, that's a question for the for the uh, viewers. Oh, yeah, what movie has more unintentional incest? I mean, Old Boy has unintentional incest, but by the characters. Yeah, the movie knows it's about yeah. incest. I don't think Back to the Future really knows it's about incest. I agree with you. But it is. I mean, that's that's a movie about incest. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Pat. I think with a very nice hand. Got some suited connectors out there. And Digital Dan's got his dice out. He used to roll those dice sometimes. Decided if he's going to raise. Let's but see if he lost, does it here. He's lost the joy. Yeah. He hasn't used those dice in a long time. It made him unique. It was a special little thing he did, and I'm sad it's gone. Oh, he's in a dark place. Yeah. The diceless darkness is what they call it. Out of your chair. Oh, I mean, if he if he kept using those things, like we could do all this cool stuff with the dice. The dice man cometh. I know? mean, if he could have bigger dice that would play well on TV, that'd be great too. Digital yeah, I've band. told him many times this, by the way. So huge flop for Ken. Flops yes, a combo it draw. It is. It's one of the worst combo draws you can have, but it's still good. It's still a monster, and you see he's got the most equity. Digital Dan probably can't call this. He does have a gut shot to the nutter butters, but. If you had the ace of spades, out there, yeah. it would make it a little bit more enticing, but I don't think with any with no yeah. spades in your hand, I don't think you could do it. I agree. Ken could easily raise here. Looks he like is he going does, to. Yeah. That's the, probably going to work. The VIG's in a bit of a tricky spot here with jack-10, no redraw. I don't think it's going to be that tricky. I think it's just going to end up in from. the muck. Which was a fantastic 
YouTube show back in the day. <laughs> Ryan, nice, La- nice Ryan LaPlant, LaPlant and Friends. Nice reference, man. Thanks. Old school. Three episodes. And the way it goes. Nice play by Ken. Yeah, I like how he played it. <coughs> Me too. Queen five. Queen five. Had <laughs> <laughs> it back to a straight Never point. Louis. Nice one. That's what I thought. Okay. The uh, eight seven of spades is known, of course, the world over as the Bondian noose. It was probably like, it been enough the, time. That something it was a lot it. of silence, so yeah, I decided to fill it. The Bondian noose, but everyone knew that already, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll go with yeah. All right, the Vig has got two sixes here. Ace nine for Peter, who limps plus one. Everyone's limping. Don't know why. So Don't know why one. either. Well, Ken's got two tens and, and checks. checks. What the Ken! Why? No! <laughs> oh, wow. It looks like Ken's a genius because he was going to get outflopped by two players. Yeah, That ace would have scared him, though, but he would have lost more money. That's for Peter's sure. Peter's going to lose a little bit here, at least. Yeah. He does bet 35. Let's see if the Vig goes for the raise. Nope, he's going to. Oh, yeah. he is going to raise. Excuse me. Don't speak so quickly. I like to speak fast. Ken can just let this one go now. Ken loses, Fasten. Fasten. loses the absolute minimum. He loses no dollars on that. <laughs> He'd already put out the forced bet. <laughs> Love your fast and loose That's like Marty cool. McFly's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Leah Thompson, right? Yeah, I think so. Caroline in the city. Caroline in the city. This, that was probably not the Look song. at the size of this bet for the VIG. It was <laughs> more than pot. He did, he did raise on the flop, and Peter just lets it go. Had the 8-4 spades. Yeah. Never. Bunch <laughs> right here. Oh, 8-4 spades so on that flop. Just over 14K in the pot. The turn is the four of diamonds. Hey, what is that? Speaking of turn, coming around the mountain, is oh. that the nitrogen sports poker train? I think they did buy a train recently. If you listen, you can hear its very choo. familiar jingle. Choo. And choo-choo. <laughs> Wait, there's the jingle. Nitro, ding, nitro, ding, nitro. Ding, ding, ding. Nitro, nitro, nitro. <laughs> wow, that's the weirdest ad <laughs> ever all of a sudden. Anyway, Nitrogen Sports Poker Room is, uh, you know, they let us do ads like this. They perhaps do. Perhaps because they don't listen to them. Free reign, baby. <laughs> 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 nitro, 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 nitro. Nitro, nitro, nitro. <laughs> Hard to get to. Expensive. Like, yeah. no one really yeah. likes uh, yeah. Caribbean. Yeah. Oh, Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. That ad is just the world's greatest. I'm ready for a new one. I'm ready for a new cool ad from Nitrogen. Just yeah. putting you guys on blast. It's time. It's yeah. been a solid. I mean, how long has that ad been playing now? I don't know. Two years. At least a year and a half. They need to be on blast. <laughs> Stuart and Batiste. Battle of the button and the blind. Battle of the ugly sixes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's because Stuart's I'm probably just going to win this. I mean, I don't know. Batiste is two back doors. And by two, I mean one back door. <laughs> Well, I guess he's got more if than one count, back. He's got more than one backdoor straight. If you count full house, is it backdoor? Uh, more than one backdoor straight. <laughs> Multiple backdoors. Oh, the sickest card oh in the deck. Oh, my God. <laughs> How is it Can possible? Can you believe it? It's like I'm Mickey sorry, Mantle hitting his 61st guys. home run. That's Mickey Mantle did not hit 61 Roger Maris. Home. There it is. 61st home run. Who could know these That things? asterisk haunted him. Stuart betting for value and getting called, looks like. I mean, he's got to get called. You guys were playing wild. They got, they got, they didn't have aces. And now it doesn't matter. That kick, the kicker's no longer play. Batiste once again wriggles off the hook. Whatever God you're saying, I don't it's like a little <laughs> like a worm. sardine. Like a sardine. <laughs> Sardines don't get caught by hooks. If Batiste was a sardine, he'd be caught by a hook. <laughs> yeah, but it'd be a musical hook. Like, I just can't, I can't stop dancing. <laughs> Piano man's got me going and I can't stop. The waitress is practicing politics, man. Every time. 
Paul, Paul, is, these refer- Paul is a real estate novelist. These, these references are <laughs> yeah. really dating us, and a lot of our audience has no idea what we're talking about. I don't about. care. I'm really just pointing out that, that mean, we're doing lyrics from the song Piano Man, which is a classic. I mean, I don't know if that really dates us. Like, Piano Man came out before I was born. It's just a classic that everybody's heard. I mean, says you. What about the 18-year-old right now? Slaving away, but getting a little poker time in. By the time I was 18, I heard Piano Man a lot of times, and it came out cool. before I was born. That was 13 years ago, right? But it's still a very popular song. Is it as popular now as it was then? I would Guess Probably it is. not. I would guess that it is. Well, you got a, you got some action on that one, buddy. but I have an issue with it. Paul is a real estate novelist. It's the Billy Joel has many lyrics in many of his songs that make no sense at all. He never had time for a wife, so being a real estate novelist <laughs> precludes you from having a He's wife. He's writing fictional books about the real estate market. Takes, What's so weird it about takes that? Eighteen hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make any. God damn sense. I want to know what the waitress is practicing politics means. I know we've talked about all this before. That's closer. That makes no sense to me. It's closer. Practicing politics? Let what is that? Can, can you give me a second to explain? Please. All right. It's close. I mean, it makes at least a little bit more sense than real estate novelists because that doesn't make any sense. I already explained real estate okay, novelists. Okay, so the waitress is practicing politics in my mind means that she like she has political aspirations and she's trying to kind of like schmooze with the customers in kind of a political way to make everybody happy, kind of be bipartisan. <laughs> because she has a politi- political aspiration. Yeah. Digital she's, Dan has 982. She's practicing. By, by the way, we do have our, our new player, L.A. Yeah. Although LA. we're calling him Laminator, Laminator, which is an amazing name. He laminates people. Kept, kept the L.A., but added a Minator to it. They and die of suffocation. I, I'm so happy he called himself that. The players, of course, do get to choose their own names for the most part. Did anyway. he decide that, or was that? No, he did. No, he Jonathan chose that. Lovey special. Nope, that was actually Laminator chose Laminator. Laminator gets outflopped by the digital one, and there is a double gutter for Peter. This could get a little interesting. A lot of times, players won't recognize they have double gutters. Usually in a 5-10 game, players recognize it. We saw Marty not recognize it a couple sessions ago, I think. Okay, sure. Looks like Peter may or may not recognize it. Nosey at least has a gut shot. I'm going to say he does recognize it. Picks pair. up a pair. That's not exactly what he wanted to see. That it's brings a straight draw for Digital Dan. It makes a 7 a lot less valuable for him. Yeah. Still, he is double gutted, and Digital Dan doesn't often have a 9 in his hand. He does this time. It's reasonable to call here. Yep. A raise also reasonable, but now that you have showdown value, Dan can be betting clubs. That's not a card anybody wanted. It's usually going to gonna go check, check, and Dan's just going to get to take it down, I would think. Not a ton of value in betting here. I mean, you'd bet to try and get called by someone who just doesn't believes you missed your draws, right? But you wouldn't really expect to get called by a six or worse too often. Well, I mean, just hearing you because you miss clubs. With a six? Yeah, they're hearing you with a six, right? Okay. I just think it's unlikely. But that's, that'd be the reason to do it, is what right. I'm saying. I'm saying it's not a thing to do. Don't do depends, it. it. Depends who you're up against. <laughs> depends what your image is, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> LA sporting that cool blazer shirt. When I say LA, of course, I mean the laminator. The laminator. It looks like a 90s style blazer shirt. Probably bought that at the same time as he bought a zine. Lamier looks tough these days. Maybe it's that tattoo on his arm or something, but I feel like I don't want to get into a fight with him anymore. Look how smiley he is. What are yeah. you talking about? No, he just like I just mean his arms and like it looks like he beat somebody up real good. <laughs> you make a few too many comments on people's arms on poker time. Why? Just when they're when they're sporting big guns, I think it's important <laughs> to point it out. Nothing okay. weird about that. Stuart gets to win with a game recognized game, yo. <laughs> Yeah. Laminator actually super nice guy. Super friendly. All right, so we got to put these guys in movies now cuz Stewart is Marty McFly. Mm. That's a pretty easy one with the vest. That is beyond easy. Outside state of Oregon outside. I mean, is Joseph is Joseph is making a case for a Bruce, a Bruce Willis role, I think. A Bruce Willis role, maybe Vin Diesel in Pitch Black or something. Ah, like early not non totally like not roided be, be, out before roided out. Yeah. yeah. Not bad. <laughs> Ken? She's like, super Getting cool. tougher. <laughs> well, Dima's like every bad guy in every John Wick movie. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> by by Dima, I mean the Vig. 
I was expecting you, Mr. Wick. That's, they don't even turn around, right? Yeah. That, and, and John Wick enters silently, and he's 40 feet away from the guy. Welcome, Mr. Wick. <laughs> No flop for no body. Like all the other casinos let you smoke. I mean, in her mind, I guess. Yeah, but how many? Is Batiste like the dude's angry brother from The Big Lebowski? Not terrible. He could just be doing The Big Lebowski, though. He could just be the dude. That's. I mean, it's not perfect, he's but not relaxed not, enough. No, he's far from that. But I could see him. I could see him saying with a little more intensity, "It really tied the room together." You know. I don't know about that one. I don't mean it. <laughs> he looks relaxed there, sort of. A little bit relaxed, but not as not dude relaxed. No, not dude relaxed. I didn't either. I was like, man, it's my uh, yeah. <laughs> not yeah. Oof. Yeah, now it's kind of. What an insane <laughs> person. <laughs> <laughs> Maniac. She was like halfway through it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, now I saw it. Okay. Now cool. it's yeah, it's cool. super strong now. Got to get that camera done. Cool. <sighs> More limping. This is how, this is how we so many limping. Limpy session so far. It's been weird. It looks like Joseph's had enough. Joseph's gonna take that six four heart and <laughs> shove it down everyone's throat. It looks like. You know, in a friendly way though. Obviously. I don't see Dan folding his fives. <laughs> nope. That would be cray cray in the. Hey, hey. Yep. <laughs> like head, head. <laughs> no, I, get, I got that. <laughs> okay, good. Man, I'm like, I'm like, this maybe somebody could open some doors and air this whole place out. And it looks like there's a lot of confusion with our graphics team right now, but <clears throat> we're pretty sure it's just Joseph and Digital Dan. <laughs> Joseph flops a whole lot of nothing, but he's still going to win if he bets. Smoking section of a casino, yeah. You don't like it? No. Hey, Tia. And I smoked for 25 years. I hate it now. And that's just gonna take it down. Oh, Are you gonna get a drink or what? Oh, nice. Uh, can you thanks. can you open the doors? Yeah. How's he gonna? Is he gonna? I'm having trouble putting LA in a movie. Sure. Laminator. Mm. <laughs> Who's he gonna laminate where? Oh, I, I you know what? I could see him being like one of the bad guy extras in the original RoboCop. <laughs> that's not terrible. That's not terrible. Who's Ken? Uh, I want to do Destroyer of Worlds. I actually have an idea of a movie that he's actually an extra in, but I can't remember the name of the movie. Well, just describe it. I'll know. It came out like in 2017. It's about these women who are coding at NASA, like before women were allowed. Hidden to figures. Hidden figures. Yeah, he's an extra in Hidden Figures. An extra. Oh yeah, that's right. He's just one of the guys who <laughs> yeah, works. Yeah, like works the, in the lab. Yeah, yeah. No, no, go on. He's both racist and sexist, but but just by you know cultural association. Yeah, it's not his fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Joseph Flop's top top, and that is all. Only only Kevin Costner is sees the future. And a Jack from wow. Laminator you know, you know like shoots to the front. He's gonna have to apply some heat to this and uh, and make something <laughs> waterproof. <laughs> he takes it down. The ten folds, huh? I'm good at single table satellites. That's interesting. Yeah. You right. can, I mean, in fairness, like you can only beat a straight draw, really. I'm yeah. <laughs> but I am a little surprised. <laughs> also, it was Joseph, right? So there are guys behind him. So maybe he just thinks like it's just not worth it. It's a pretty reasonable fault. I think I like it. Only three. I guess I gotta play. I was gonna play it anyways. Just in case. Just in case. I had pocket jack. Oh man. These guys are having a good time. That's what we like to see. Yep. That's why we have the game. We just like joy. Yep. We do this for... It's sort of like a Mr. Rogers thing, except for money. Mr. Rogers made some money, right? No, I mean, they're play, like kids would watch Mr. Rogers and you know not watch it for money, but these guys are playing for money. Ah. Although, that's a brilliant idea. Mr. Rogers for money. Send it to all the VCs. They'll fund immediately. <laughs> Get me on Shark Tank right now. <laughs> Mr. Wonderful, go crazy. So it's really pocket threes against Digital Dan's Ace King and the dominated... Well, Ken now has no. Nope, he doesn't have the. Best I mean, he has dance. a flush draw, but it's a bad flush draw. He doesn't draw. want it. Dan should probably be betting here. Start building a pot. He doesn't have a whole lot to be afraid of. Not crazy. What is that jingle? Can't imagine Joseph's gonna continue here with Ken behind him. Of course, Pee Wee Herman, man. Ken 
often will make this call. He likes going just with ace high, and he's got a spade also. I'd be surprised if Ken folds. It may even be fine. It may be right for Ken to call, but I'd be shocked if he folded. He usually doesn't think this long, though. Oh, my God, Ken. Nice fold. Yeah. Made the right fold. I am shocked. Is that a little stone that he has as a card protector, by the way? It's uh, Yeah. It means a lot to Ken. Yeah, what's the story behind Let it? Let me paint you a picture. 1977. It's 4 a.m. Ken hasn't gone to bed yet. The beach is beautiful. The sun is just about to peek over the horizon. All of a sudden, a flash of light. I'll continue later. <laughs> I am me and all. I'm sure the audience entirely will be waiting with bated breath on yeah. that. It's, it's me a good too. start. I don't know how it's it was a hell of a start. I don't know where it's gonna go. Here's the vig once again with two tens. I guess Peter had two tens last time. Now I think about it. But I'm sure he's had tens in his life. Maybe. <laughs> Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Joseph sets the line at 84. I say 84, 85. Oh, wow. one of 1984. For tequila having that Is music really? associated oh. with it? Phones off. No, no Dan. What? Wow. Oh, what year did the movie? I said it was 84, must be out of Batiste will defend. This is basically the James Bond hand, though. This is the hand. It was spades, but the hand he, he had in uh, Casino Royale, right? It was 7-4 suited, wasn't it? I don't think so. No. Well, then I'm wrong. That's true. <laughs> Batiste flops to four. Didn't want to. <laughs> well, he'd, he'd want to if he flops some more or turns, that, turns some more cards. Split screen. <laughs> we'll call that a nice split screen. I don't know. I like it. It's kind of interesting, I it's guess. It's dynamic. We get to stay right here. We can see half of one of the players involved in the hand. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Goes check, check here. Tease probably thinks he has the best hand. I wouldn't expect him to bet for value, though. Oh, and the big checks it back. I guess the five the pairing five is not pairing a great makes card. It, it makes sense to check. Yeah. It's a spot where uh, Batista was probably going to pay off. Can't you see, like, in RoboCop, the main bad guy being like, we're going to get you, RoboCop, and then L.A. being like, yeah, RoboCop, we're going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> no one referred to him as RoboCop Well, in whatever. The movie. You know what I mean. Yeah. Do you know what the most famous phrase that came out of RoboCop, the first RoboCop movie? What? I'd, I'd buy that for a dollar. That was like a big thing. It's pretty stupid. In the 80s, it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> really, really at the bottom of the barrel in the 80s, huh? I mean, we had Ghostbusters too. Okay, so Digital Dan playing the four deuce he for a raise. The four deuce. This is him and Batiste. They both love playing this hand. And Digital Dan has many times where he's won huge pots with four deuce off. Well, let's see if he takes it a little far here because Ken has two queens. He's going to three bet. He did get Snuggy to fold queens once when he four bet four deuce yep. off. I remember that. That but was one of Digital Dan's greatest moments in life. It's true. I don't believe uh, Ken would be folding to a four bet here. I don't believe that is. I believe well. Digital Dan will probably just throw it away right now. But let's see. Experiment over or experiment continues. The way he holds his, those fingers splayed up on his shoulder like that, it's weirding me out. He looks like he's going to martial arts someone to death with that hand. Or it's so, just a fake hand. It could be a fake hand. All right, so Dan's it man then. He does fold. IP man? Are you sure that's how it's said? I don't know how it's I'm pretty sure it's it man. Really? Why would it be IP man? Why would it be ip man? Because it's there's no period. It's just an I and a P and then it says yeah. man. So why yeah. would it be IP? But why wouldn't it be IP? What, what other words do you G.I. Joe. <laughs> OJ. What about OJ? That's a name. And no, orange juice. When people say OJ. And if you write OJ, you don't have dots, and it's OJ. I got you there. I finally got you. You're definitely wrong on this one. <laughs> anyway, Dan is it, man. I'm sure there'll be at least one comment telling us who's right. Yeah. And either way, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph thinks about raising, but decides to keep on with how everyone's doing it right now, which is just limping along. Stewart's like, I wonder what the professor's up to. Batiste is not all in. Okay. It's the do uh, doc. Yeah, he, he was once a professor probably. Right? He, he never called him a professor. Whatever. He, he always called him doc. He's it's got doc a professor-esque thing going on. I just got to make sure, you know. Let's see, let's see what's going on. Okay, Two huge pair. flop for Joseph. Two pair for Digital Dan and for Peter. Ken flops the flush draw better than Joseph's flush draw, but Joseph, Joseph flops the whole world This here. is an action flop Open here. ender for Batiste as well. This could be nuts. 
Joseph bets 50. Ken with his flush draw going to call. Easy call. Batiste going to call his open ender. Somebody's going to raise their two pair, I expect right? Peter's going to raise his two pair right the now. Vig Him is, and Digital Dan both have Vig, two pair. Oh, not the Vig. Digital Dan might fold if Peter raises here. It's kind of a weird spot. How much money? Peter has the, only a 620 back. I could see Dan just deciding to go with it also. I could, but he could be in a really bad spot. With all the guys around in this. Like, Joseph is a problem. Peter's a potential problem. I think problem. A6 is a different story, but 5-6, you're... Maybe you should get rid of it. I here. don't think you can fold a six, five six. You have to at least think about. You could sort of say to yourself, eh. It's only another thousand bucks. I, I can potentially roll with it. That said, it's totally reasonable to fold, and I, like, I don't. I, I, I think I like the fold. I like it too, and I think Joseph should effectively move in here. Yep, me too. I mean, he doesn't want to get it all in with Ken, obviously, for a 3K a piece. But most of the time, Ken's folding if Joseph puts in a big raise. Uh, Joseph doesn't have to put in a huge raise right. anyway. He can make it, it like 900. He could probably click it back. He can make it 800. He does? Did he say? Did he announce? No. I don't think he said anything. I thought he said something. It looks like he's making it about 900, like you were saying. I think he could have made it like 550 also. This is fine. Yeah. I guess it would have been 650. Batiste throws away the straight draw, and we've and got a pretty pure thing here. Obviously, Peter's got to go with it, and it's a basically just a flip. Peter's a little bit lucky that he's in this spot. Like, he's losing all the made hands here. Yeah, this right? is one of the best things that Joseph can show up with. It's like six X of hearts, this, or he's beat. So, yeah. this is actually pretty good. It's too maybe, bad for him. Maybe that some nut flush draws, which would be better. To okay, be maybe, but maybe not. Well, that's Ooh, it already. It, but well, well, no, no, no. He's got yet. four outs. But nope. Joseph but gets, gets there, there in both ways on yeah. the turn. Oh, shit, yeah. Pasco's got to be... Uh, Digital Dan has got to be thrilled he did not put more money in there. Although, if he raised, maybe Joseph even gets away. And it looks like that's the end of Peter. He is removing his microphone. Yep. That is the telltale sign of... take the sad walk to the exit. Okay. First time here. Can yeah. Yeah. Is that hard okay. soup? Yeah, we put that on the seat. <laughs> Digital Dan just thinking about what might have been. Maybe he could have got raised and chopped with Peter instead. Yeah, Joseph probably would have folded if Dan raised. Sometimes Joseph loses his mind, though, and puts in a big re-raise yeah. there. And then Dan would have folded, I guess, and lost three, some extra four. money. Yeah, really? yeah, five, five, six. Wow. Oh, wow. I had three, four. Oh, nice fold. <laughs> and what is, what is, Ken, wants, Ken would have won the hand, by the way. If he oh, yeah, that's right. Forced out. But that re-raise by Joseph made it easy. Yep. Joseph played it perfectly. Holy shit. Raise 35. This is a pretty pre prime spot to uh, put a three bet in, I think, but Vig's just going to call. Ken's like, I'll show you extra and hidden figures. Eight, five suited. What do you lay me? Well, yeah, that makes sense. Vig uh, flops pretty well, but Ken yeah. flops amazing. Once again, a big wow. combo draw. It's like these are made for TV, these yeah, hands. This could absolutely be a huge pot right now if these guys want to play it. Looks like, though, the Vig just calls with Seems top like and bottom. Seems a really good spot to raise. Yep. And Ken gets there now. Once again, it's the nine of the suit that comes in on the turn. Vig can only go into, I think, call mode now. Raising would seem crazy. Ken does have a straight flush draw just for funsies. <laughs> He doesn't want to get there, though. That'll kill his action. But he doesn't that, want that card either. It's better to get there with the straight flush. Cause oh, the Vig he is knows. bleeding for what looks like 500. Ken, Ken calls and loses. It's not crazy for Ken to call there. No. Totally reasonable. That was just a cooler all the way. Wow. That could have been worse, though. Vig raises the flop. It could be way worse. And all of a sudden, the Vig is having quite a nice little session here. Yeah. Started with uh, beating up on Digital Dan with the aces against Kings. That was last episode, of course. And now it just keeps on rolling. Man. Man. The Miracle River card. He gets the Miracle turn card that, that crushes him and the Miracle River card where Ken can't fold. I wonder that if he could have gotten a check raise in there. Well, he definitely... I don't know. I don't know if Ken's going to call Ken a check a raise. Ken gets a sticky sometimes, like he he's does. Like to say. He does. Ken's a pretty good target for the check raise, I would say that. It's a pretty good card to check raise, actually, too. It could be no raise. And then I'm playing Ken off a couple strokes. Yeah, maybe that's even better. That said, he bet big. Yeah. So I like that he bet big. Ken wouldn't have bet 500 on the river, I don't believe. He so. might have. Ken bets big sometimes, too. Yeah, I guess he does. Usually not so much on the river, though. Anyway, rolling on. Vig with another one. Adds 
more change to the coffers. According to Levy Math, that pot equally valuable to the last pot. Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about? No, don't worry about it. Did he win a pot last time? Yeah. Yes. Did he win a pot this time? Yes. Take away one pot. That means he won one pot. He won take two away pots. One pot. Because yeah, he won two pots. You take away one, either one, he'll still have won one pot. You guys in your dumb statistics, why don't you take the analytics that whatever that is and put it in your freaking hat and smoke it? You and Charles Barkley in a think tank together? <laughs> I don't even know why people it's talk terrible. about numbers. It's terrible. Terrible. Uh, anyway, I'm. This is the point when you always make sure you. Everyone knows that I'm kidding with that stuff. What happened to you? I'm gonna let you just be known as the dumb guy. I think that's on. fine. No, no, all right, I like that. It's my brand. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here we go. It's Batiste out flopping Ken. It's uh, it's not much. It's in. It's a boring hand. I'm done with it. <laughs> Can it end already? Jeez. You are critical. I'm impatient. Right, 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 right. I require like two pair against a uh, combo draw every hand. I've well, been, just I've been spoiled. Put that other hand on rewind. Oh, looks like everyone's getting a little tipsy now. Laminator, Laminator, known by the way the world over, well at least in Portland, as being able to hold his drink. Yeah. So him drinking here is absolutely strategic, trying to get everyone sloshed. That's what's going on. Or maybe they're just drinking pickle juice. Everything about that? Do people really drink pickle juice though? Is that a pickle thing? Pickle ju juice is used as a back for when you're taking shots sometimes. Like in Russian culture, vodka, you take it with a pickle back. Meaning you drink it afterward? Yeah, you as have a like chaser a little bit of pickle juice as a chaser. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and what does that do? It like kills the pain? Uh, it's like a palate cleansing thing. Mm. It's Just sniff some lavender like the rich people do. How about that? Sniff like some lavender? Yeah, like stewing on that succession. Doesn't, that doesn't clean your palate. Actually, it does, but probably not from drinking vodka. No. <laughs> Digital Dan with Jack 10 of spades here. Batiste with 10 7 of hearts. And, and Batiste once again. Laminator with an unknown out flops hand. Flops somebody. Out flops Digital Dan. Yeah, we don't know if he out flopped Laminator. <laughs> probably or not. based on the action so far. Yeah, probably. Not going to love that card, though. Checks. Checks through Batiste. Well, now it's very likely that Laminator's got Batiste beat. Choosing to check back the flop and bet the turn on this queen, but of course, Batiste can't quite fold uh, yet. Diamonds. Yeah. Or sevens. Although usually he's gonna you're right, he's gonna bet a seven. Not exactly a great card for Batiste on the river either. No. Let's see if Laminator decides to bet. He is betting again. I think this is probably a fold. Seventy five. Interesting. It's pretty cheap. Laminator is not known for bluffing a lot, despite drinking a lot. He has his moments, but it's true. This is such a good price. I think Batista is going to find a call here. Is he going to get laminated? Is he going to be added to the wall of laminations in he, the house of the laminator? He might get laminated. Batista does find a call. I, I like it based on the, the size. Let's see. It looks like he lost. It looks like he lost for sure. Probably was a five based on his face. Can't see. The face The if face makes the me sure. If only the camera person would. If only. Oh, his queen, queen deuce. deuce. So he, he turned the queen. Bet for value twice. Yep. I think the Laminator would be a, a fun villain. You know, he's got like a wall of laminated heroes in his basement. The la laminates the whole body? Yeah. Wow, that's hard. He's the Laminator. He can do it. Still, that's he's a challenging. A Even if you're known for it, it's he's challenging. He's got a gigantic laminating machine and all the skills to boot. Oh, it hurts so much to go through that. It would be so painful. You don't feel it. You don't feel it. He's a he's a nice villain, so he anesthetizes yeah, you. Yeah, because that's what there are a lot of in the world, nice villains. Well, the Laminator is a different type, you know? Yeah. He's his own breed. That's good. That's more interesting. He'll laminate you calmly. Digital yeah. Dan. Suited Thank connectors. you. Someone finally raises again. We need more raises. Let's get some raises. Get some raisins. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, right? Looks like she's eating them all. <laughs> so... Uh, Ken still has the best hand, but if Digital Dan decides to see bet, Digital Dan making that weird face like, I don't know what is up. I would I'm take, checking. I would take a grape. Once again, Dan should be betting this turn for sure based on Ken checking again. Ken can have an ace, but whatever. Can I buy my phone back? It's time to try and win this pot. That is going to probably I mean it's even gotta Ken work. Can't it's gotta on. work so anyway there's Ken Stone why don't you tell us the rest of that story oh the flash of light yeah he's on the beach flash of light all that stuff and all of a sudden 
he wakes up. It's 1988, 11 years later. He hasn't aged a day. It wasn't 1977. It was, if you rewind the tape. I thought it was 1976 or 78. No, it was 77. All right. It's 11 years later. It's 1988. He's on the very same beach, but instead of behind him, a beautiful meadow, emptiness, nature preserve, a towering condo with a bunch of rich snobs. (laughs) Ken decides, guess what I am now? I'm the time vigilante. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we'll get to more of that uh, yeah. when we come after this hand. Eventually, there's a rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Laminator with two eights. He's not afraid to raise it up or to take small things and <laughs> put them in plastic. <laughs> <laughs> or humans. Batiste really doesn't like folding, as we see. He is in the big blind. It is suited. He does have beautiful hair. <laughs> well, Laminator can't love that flop, but it still flop. has the best hand. Let's see if he opens the door for Batista. I like betting this. He hates that flop like an unlaminated menu. Hates yeah. That. that is problematic. They serve you your drinks, a little spillage, and you're yeah. like, now this thing is no no value anymore. Now I feel like I ruined the property of the restaurant, but it's really the restaurant's fault. They're making me feel bad yeah. by their lack of preparation. You know what? That makes me want to trash this whole place. <laughs> <laughs> and laminate everything. I am the laminator. So he's <laughs> laminate and time vigilante is his arch rival, obviously his enemy, right? Yeah, I think probably probably so. Yeah. The laminator does own the condo. Who's the bad guy in this? The laminator, right? Oh, it's yeah. gotta be. Yeah. The time vigilante. He laminates people. <laughs> Vigilantes are, are treated as heroes in, in these stories. Wow. Haven't you seen any Batman movies? I have. I have seen a few of those. <laughs> I like to stare at Brian all the time. Oh, wait, we have a time. We have time cards. Laminator, the nicest bad guy you're ever going to meet. <laughs> yeah. Sweetest, nicest guy you're ever going to meet. That's how he tricks him. Stuart yeah. with the Ace King. Very Te- simple open. It's like Ted Bundy did that. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Go to dark places on this show. Doesn't take long. Okay, so yeah, the end of the story for Ken. Oh, yeah, please. Why the rock is important to him. Please. So in 1988, when he woke up and he decides, I'm going to be the time vigilante because they, they you know. What they did to they my family. They paid paradise and they put up a parking lot, basically, yeah. uh, behind him in the condos. He looks down and where, where there used to be sand, time has condensed the sand into a beautiful glowing rock. <laughs> That's not what time does, but okay. It did this time because <laughs> okay. of the time vigilante. Sure. And. And he picks it up and he says, this is my symbol now. I fight for all the meadows. And also, when I play poker, I'm going to use this as my card protector. Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it really fits nicely over cards. It's a nice weight. Yeah. yeah. And so for, for the <laughs> for the past 40 years or so, <laughs> he's been you know, fighting for the meadows. I mean, as a time vigilante, can it be for the last infinite number of years in theory? I, I guess. I'm trying to make it digestible. Oh, that's smart. That's smart. Laminator... Trying to decide what to do after limping with King Queen. It's a three bet, I guess. It's a pretty easy fold. Batista's three betting Ken's open and with the Ken, jack off. Ken calls with the King wow. Nine suited. That's, How does he know? That is supposed to work when Batista oh, yeah. does that. Well, it still might. Batista might just win more money now. Let's see. Yep. I would fully Very expect Batista to win right now. He would love to have the jack ten of clubs, but you know he'll take just a fold, as uh, most of us would most of the time. It's impossible to think Batiste wouldn't bet, and he does. And so he happy when he sees Ken quickly remove that time rock. <laughs> he gets an extra $130 since Ken decided to call the three bet. What is, what's going on inside Batiste when he wins that pot? You think he's like, that's right, that's right. You have a beard, you're good. You have jeans. <laughs> or something else. <laughs> you think it's that or something else? It's one or the other, right? That or something else. Yeah, it is either that or something else. I'll give you that. <laughs> Which do you think it is, though? I think it's probably something else. What do you think I'll it take the field. You can have that. All right. I'll give you one other possibility next okay. time he wins a pot, I guess. <laughs> nice hand for Stewart. Looks like Ken is going to call. Two four is going to set mine. Batiste. Batiste going to raise again. Batiste now in three betting mode. And now in steel mode. This is going to be bad timing. The question is, is Stuart going to four bet or not? They I are at a stack depth where it can get awkward if you. Yeah, if I you expect Stuart's going to do a lot of calls here. I don't know why it says three bet ten. To it seems unlikely that that's what it is. So basically, it says Stuart just four, raised normally. It says four bet for Batiste, but really, it 
yeah, this is software. What's going on? Let's not worry about it. We know Batiste. Yeah. We know Stuart raised and Batiste. Stuart raised at 35. But Ken called and Batiste made it 190. And now Stuart just. Ha- I I'd be shocked if Stuart does anything but call here. And that's probably going to bring Ken in too. In fact, it, it very likely it will. should bring Ken in. Well, Ken only has 1.8 K. That's two, his two problem. Two players though. He's not really getting the right price to call. If he can get both of their stacks. <laughs> if there's a huge pot that's played, he, it looks, it looks like, like Stuart is gonna, raising here. Stuart's not going to let Ken come in. This is going to be the end of the hand. And I guess when you do this against Batiste, you're just going with it as Stuart, which is precarious. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true at all. He made it 540. I don't know at all that he's calling if Batiste shoves. It's unclear to me. That's why it's a weird yeah. thing to do because right. you put yourself in a very strange spot if you get five bet. I mean, Mostly five bets mean queens are no good in deep stack cash games, but not all the time. Not no, against everybody. Some some people. Oh, and Batiste is gonna. Well, he's, he's gonna, gonna float? call here. This is basically a preflop float. Wow, he's praying for his ace king. I guess. I assume Batiste is just gonna rep any any chance he gets to rep something. If Stewart checks, he's gonna have to rep it. Stewart's definitely putting Batiste well, on a stronger. Oh Ooh. well, Stewart hated the window, but he was like, oh, never mind. Life is great. I hope you have ace king. Stewart should definitely bet here. I think you should bet. Doesn't need to bet big at all. Kind of small, like 300. Yep. That's fine. Batiste only has 1.9K. 300. Looks like 300. Nice sizing there. Batiste, it's a weird spot. After Stuart has put in the 4-bet pre, what is Batiste beating right now? I don't know if there's anything. Is Stuart really 4-betting 10s? Maybe. I'm not sure, though. Seems unlikely. Another ace. That's a great card for Stuart. Okay. Stuart's got I think it. Boy, if Batiste has an ace here, I can get it all. Yeah, he's just hoping no king comes. He's thinking no king, no king, no king, no ace. You know? Yep. It's not a terrible time to check. It's also not a terrible time to move in. Yep. I think it's almost hard to screw this up if you're Stuart. I think if he bets and doesn't move in, he should bet small enough to give Batiste the illusion of fold equity. Like about like five hundred. Looks like more than that. Looks like eight or something. So he's trying to make it so so Batista's just forced to call the turn and forced to call the river every time he has an ace, which isn't crazy. As it stands, Batista's in a very weird spot here. I mean, I don't think it's weird at all. You think it's a fold? I think it's an easy fold. I mean, what is he hoping? But he that Stuart has exactly kings and he can get him to fold by moving in. I mean, that's all we're down to, really. Yeah, Stuart might shut it down with jacks or tens if he took this line with jacks or tens. I think he's shutting it down with kings point. also. I don't know if he's betting kings on the flop, but certainly not on the turn. Your beat almost unless Stuart's completely lost his mind. Batista's beat. Stuart rarely completely loses his mind in in this way. We just don't see that. Yeah, this, I agree. I think this is an easy fold. By the way, you block jacks if you want to tell yourself the fantasy that maybe he has jacks. But Batiste really doesn't want to throw it away here. Wow. Is Stuart going to get it all anyway? He's thinking about it. I think Batiste is realizing that he blocks queens full and considering a shove because he's going to rep queens full. He's never going to get Stuart off of ace-king, though, because of the size of his stack. He's only got 1.6. So he's been moving be for Batiste 900 more. Thinking, am I right? Like, I, I mean, I don't know. If he if it seems, it does anything, he's going to move in and it's going to be repping queens full. That's my assessment. That seems like a bad plan to me. I'm not saying it's a good plan. I'm saying that's probably what he's thinking about. He lets it go. And he's sad. But Look, he's looking. He's just trying to figure out if Stuart is bluffing him or not. Did Stuart show I think one queen? Maybe he showed one queen based on that reaction from Batiste. Yeah. Oh, oh, I lost a bunch of points. I know, but I on top of the queen, so no low, shit like that. No. I just no. Like no? Wow. Every time. Okay. I almost ripped it in, but I think he's trying to get me to rip it in. Why? So. Okay. Ugh. Okay. Had a queen. What's still? I wonder what would have happened if Stuart checked. But he might just check back and take into showdown value. I would expect so. Although he could try and get kings to fold there. Yeah. You might do better getting kings to fold. You do, you know, chunk it out to get kings to fold too. Yeah. Like 500 and 1100 might do it. No, I'm not folding an ace. Yeah. It's kind of like the you lost like two, three fucking kings. But I mean, I, don't know. I figured out another movie character, but these could be. It was when you said fantasy. Mm -hmm. You think of Fantasia? He could be the broom in Fantasia if you turn him upside down. From the Sorcerer's Apprentice part of it? 
Sure. Yeah. Mickey, Mickey yeah, is yeah. the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah. If you turn Batista upside down, <laughs> <laughs> he's the broom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said he almost ripped it in there, though, so I guess maybe he's going to try and get kings to fold. I can't imagine him trying to get ace-king to fold there for this with the stack that he had. Well, he's thinking it's unlikely Stuart has queens full because he blocks it. Sure. So if Stuart doesn't have many full houses because ace-queen is also blocked, <laughs> yep. that must be the thought process. It's just hard to believe Stuart would play kings or jacks like that or any worse hand. <laughs> Well, he's got to have some bluffs. Or he's supposed to. That, right. But, but that's a pretty big gap, though. That, yeah. You know, everyone's supposed to have bluffs, but the tight players don't have enough, and the white players have too many, right? Stewart's a candidate to be balanced, though. He's a candidate, but in that spot, I think very few players are going to be balanced. Like, uh, only the very, very best players yeah. in the world are going to be balanced. There, I, I agree. That's no knock on Stewart. I think it's really hard for him to have many bluffs. Dan's just going to get to win with ace high here. King high. They want. King high. Drink and get crazy. They, can, they know my game. Yeah. Yeah. We got a little out of line. Pretty fun. <laughs> Guess so. Oh, but Batiste getting cute with that queen jack cost him a lot of money. Yeah. Did. Yeah, Robocop, we're going to get your family. <laughs> Can't you see him? <laughs> His family's already dead. <laughs> they killed the family in the beginning. Get your next family, too. <laughs> <laughs> You know who played RoboCop? Of course you don't. That guy who's weird looking. Yeah, that's right. Peter Weller. <laughs> but I've seen the movie. At the time, that movie was awesome. <laughs> well, at this time, it's terrible. <laughs> they remade RoboCop uh, a few years ago. Are you ago. sure? Yeah, I am sure. Samuel L. Jackson was in it. I'm sure that was really good. It was with the guy from The Killing. I don't know what that means. The Vig has limped 10-9 off. Because this is what happens now. Joseph with 9-7 off is counting on a raise. I kind of like it. Joseph loves to attack limpers with bad hands. But when he's got a good hand, often will limp himself. I think he should probably make it more than 40, but I like the yeah. idea. Big really should call here with 10-9 <laughs> off once. But Wow, 40 is enough, I guess. Maybe Joseph knows his customer. Joseph gets to pick up a free $25. Go to the movies with a friend. Get a very small one candy for the two of you. And you're good. Don't share the candy. You have to share the candy if you only have $25. Well, you're, it's your $25, right? Yeah. Your friend gets to see the movie. You're eating the damn candy. There's no way you're going to sit there eating the candy in front of your friend and they're not going to yeah, take some Yeah, you're going to sit on candy. opposite sides of the theater so they don't have to watch you eat the they're candy. They're going to hear you eat the candy. They're going to come get it anyway. Not everybody chooses as loud as you, Jonathan. <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> we talk about the important stuff on this show. The big's got a real hand. Yep. And a raise. This is how we play poker. He makes it 50 because, I don't know, he decided it's time to make it 50. Well, the laminator's got a better hand. Yep, he's going to laminate the shit out of the big. <laughs> but he's definitely calling this in the in the uh, big blind. We know yeah. that. Unless he's three betting. He's been three betting a fair amount, but he's it's a candidate. It. Yeah, but he's decided just to call. It does flop well enough. You can just call here. The big opened under the gun and made it bigger than normal. I like a call for sure. And pretty good flop for Jax. Yeah. The VIG does not continue. I think Laminator should bet here. Me too. Protect his equity. Get Seven. called by eights and nines and hands like that. Yep. As it stands, he's probably just going to take it down. Hard to imagine the VIG calling. Yes, you can beat clubs, but your equity ain't great. I'm good. Damn it. Threes. Oh, that. The threes good. I played it weak. I should have played it stronger. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I lost a lot of money on that, dude. On three? <laughs> Was that some sort of a blessing or a prayer? Or Something. It's worth a dice or a See? Not so much Robocop anymore, huh? More like... Kung Fu Samurai? The Passion I don't know. of the Christ. Thank you. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Digital Dan. Yeah. Disappointing. That was actually a good movie. Shaolin Soccer. Shaolin Soccer is a good yeah. movie. Yeah. All right. Well, Ken's Kung gonna win. Also, Kung Fu Hustle, made by the same guy. Both really good movies. Actually, Laminator looks like a guy from Kung Fu Hustle for sure. Okay. There's a particular guy. Smokes a lot. <laughs> I don't know if Laminator does, but the, the character does. 
excellent information. Yep. Hmm. Disappointment for you. Yeah, I have an older. Right, Ella? Yeah. I think we've got one or two more hands here. Yep. For this we'll be, episode. We'll be hitting the halfway mark of this session. Of course, next week you'll get another I, I, poker time. I, I, I don't like Always on Tuesday. Unless there's five Tuesdays Always in the month. fresh. And when you say fresh, you don't mean new. You mean fresh, like no, fresh super is, cool. No, fresh is an acronym, but I'm not going to tell you what it stands for because I don't have time to <laughs> tell. Think tell them what the first two letters stand for, at least. Whatever, whatever. Fucking real. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. And of course, the third one is Euro Dynamics. <laughs> yeah, obviously. So now you're, you just got to figure out check the last two Check out this letters. flop. The VIG yeah. with two pair Batiste with the over pair. Check, goes check, check, check somehow. And that's an action killing card right there. Now Batiste is going to call down, but somehow will not lose nearly as much money as he otherwise would have. That, that was a check raise all day. It's a bunch of It goes check, cards. check on the river when the hearts come <laughs> in. Sense. What a deal for Batiste to only lose $95, that is $85. Certain, that is certainly an example of losing the minimum. Yep. Batiste making eye contact trying to say, see, I lost again with a good hand. It's so sick. I'm going to kill someone later. <laughs> With my hair. <laughs> that would be the way to do it. I mean, if you're going to. Just to show off to, to Joseph, be like, look what I can do. Yeah. Can you do that? That's not. <laughs> Kim's coming after you, but Dave. Hell, you tried with eight five, man. Yeah. Race pretty like a boss. Man, bank me on the that Joseph likes 6-4, but not enough to open it there. Stuart. So it's going to go back to the future. <laughs> With this ace queen. <laughs> wow, that was really creative. <laughs> He's got, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. That raises $35, not 1.21 gigawatts, which is a lot. It depends on who you ask. It's all relative, right? Maybe in 1985, it's a lot. It, it was 1955 when they were talking about how much it was. Come on, man. Whatever. It's a lot in 1985, too. <laughs> it's probably not anymore. Now, like, now with all these billionaires everywhere. It's like an 8 megabyte computer, you know? And Stuart is to be. going to just take it down there. That's going to be the last hand. We yeah. will check back with you guys for some more smoke and fire, or as I call it, poker time That's next what you week. call it. you have a microphone.